four-year-old Nicola Towns is joining her kindergarten friends in the forest. But they're not on an excursion. This forest is their kindergarten. It's freezing today, only five degrees. But even when it's raining, snowing or minus 20 degrees, you'll find these children playing and learning outside. So here bor de in under om vinteren. Så sådan passer insekter på dem selv. De kan bo ind under barken. It might sound extreme, but it's not unusual in Denmark, where 10% of the preschools, about 500 of them, are forest kindergartens. They're run by pedagogues like Johan Leigor, someone with a university degree in human development. Oh, hvad gør vi så? Hopper I bare ned her, eller hvad? I løber bare. You have a lot of visitors come from overseas to see how you do things here. How do they react? They are thinking, what are we doing? And uh, when do you learn to go to school? And why there is no fence? And wow. It's important for young children to learn what it is to maybe be cold, what it is to be wet, um, and survive that. My name is Jane William Siegfriedson. I came to Denmark over 20 years ago and was amazed at the outdoor things that young children were doing. And I now live and work here. Jane's the author of a book on forest education in Denmark. She's brought me to a forest kindergarten near her home outside of Vibor. He's in the tree and it's only a very thin sapling tree. It's very, very wobbly. It takes an awful lot of balance to sit in that and use both hands at the same time. In an ordinary playground, they wouldn't have the opportunities to develop those physical skills. Jane runs outdoor education workshops for teachers and carers from around the world, including Australia. While we've been talking, the kids have moved on to their next activity. Are you going to tell me this isn't as dangerous as it looks? No, it's not dangerous. The children have learned how to use the knives properly. So it's not seen as some kind of weapon. It's a tool for doing something such as whittling. I think many, many cultures like to wrap their children up in cotton wool. I don't think that's about uh, a lack of love here for children by their parents. They see it in a different way. That in fact, children should uh, have the chance to, to be free. So what, what's your approach to safety here? You have to use your brain. Uh, and if you trust that the kids, they can take care of themselves. Matty, are you afraid of anything? I was watching this boy climb to the very top of the tree, other boys hitting the log with the stick very close to each other. I couldn't see you or anyone else? I was standing up there and I saw it too. You saw it? Yes. You weren't worried? No. They, that's a part of the play almost every day. And, and they learn and they learn to be careful. Sometimes they hit, yes, they got a little accident. But that's the way to learn. Only once I have to drive to the, the hospital with a boy with a big injury in 17 years. So I'm not worried. And what was the injury? It was a parent who drove over a foot of a kid. 
Og bare skå her lige stille sammen ned på den. Godt, der kommer en pind. Det er godt, Nicolas. Der er en pind bagved dig nu, siger de. The world's first forest kindergartens were founded in Scandinavia in the early 50s. Today they're also popular in Germany, Austria and Switzerland. Some locations are more challenging than others. Johann's kindergarten sits less than 100 meters from a fjord, but there aren't any fences because they're not needed. Why do you stop here, Carl? Fordi så her må vi ikke gå. Man skal have en pædagog med deroppe, inden man går over. I think one of the big things that I see here is the amount of trust that there is in Denmark. That there is no a uh, formal inspection of kindergartens. There's no one that comes round and checks up that you are doing what you should be doing. But how easy is it for parents like Nicola's mother Nadia to trust the pedagogues and their own kids? I know my sister, see, so they can run down to the water. I was like, yeah, but they don't do that. You know, they know where they're allowed to go to. They don't... Some... You, you trust them? Do you, think, do you think a lot of it's based on trust? A lot. Yeah. But I must say I'm happy that I'm not down here during the day because I'm a bit worried when Emil crawls, crawls into the top of a tree. <laughs> so you're but... happy that you can't see it? Yeah, yeah, I am. At Nadia's house, I meet her husband, Paul. He's English. Danish forest kindergartens came as a big culture shock. In England, kids can be harmed in any way, you know, falling out of a tree or something like that. Then they won't allow it. There are just a handful of forest kindergartens in the UK. The US only opened its first in 2007, Australia five years ago. What do you think it is about Denmark that they can get away with that, but they can't in England. It's hard to explain. I really don't know what it is about the Danes. It's just a very relaxed frame of mind they've got about things, everything. One of the main reasons Nadia and Paul have sent both Nicola and her six-year-old sister Jessica to a forest kindergarten is their fear that the virtual world is distracting the girls from the natural one. As soon as they come home, all they want to do is play the iPad. That's what they want to do. Well, you know, that worries us that they'll, they'll do that. So we try to encourage them to, to go outside and play more. Surely not everyone's convinced about the value of an outdoor education. This is Jessica's primary school. I've come here because I thought the teachers might be concerned at how kids from a forest kindergarten struggle to adapt in the classroom. Do you notice any difference between her and the kids who've come from normal kindergartens? Not at all. They are all prepared to go to school. My own son went to a forest kindergarten. Oh, really? Yeah. So you never had any worries about how he would go at school? No, not at all. What do you think about the idea that the children should be using their time in kindergarten to start to learn some reading, some writing, some maths, to get ready for school? I think this is uh, work spoiled because of, they are not ready. You have to learn them to be interested in learning. Over the last 20 years, the number of outdoor kindergartens in Denmark has roughly doubled. And now the forest gospel is spreading. Even schools are looking to take the class outdoors. Now there's a lot of research been done that shows that children are less stressed, that children concentrate more, that children are ill less often, that their motor development is far, far better for being outdoors than indoors. 
and a lot of teachers is, aha, getting, yes, I can, oh, it works. So I'm, I'm happy. Four-year-old Nicola Towns is joining her kindergarten friends in the forest. But they're not on an excursion. This forest is their kindergarten. It's freezing today, only five degrees. Even when it's raining, snowing, or minus 20 degrees, you'll find these children playing and learning outside. Then the cold up. In two and be. So here I board in on a on winter. So sun pass up insect that put them sell. He can board in on a barking. It might sound extreme, 